Hello there, YouTubers, and I'll post this link in the right up above. This is a section on the FZ2000 in the UK and the FZ2500 in the USA. It's in many parts because this camera does a lot of things. And here we go with part one. Enjoy. This first part is sort of the names and the functions of the components. Let's see. Lens hood, I put it on backwards just to keep it stored. And the lens cap, I've got a filter on here. You can please yourself. I think the filter at 20 odd pound is better than having to replace the lens. <laughs> but you please yourself. Right. Shutter button. Zoom lever. There and in the viewfinder is the self timing indicator and the AF autofocus assist lamp. FN4 at the moment is the exposure compensation button. You can set them to suit yourself at any time. Same with that, it's called the front dial there. And then you've got the red button there is the motion picture button they call it. To you and me it's a video. <laughs> On here you've got the shoulder strap eyelets. And then you've got a rear dial. Again you can make it anything you want. Yeah. And then you've got different lamps built in here, status indicators and Wi-Fi connection lamps. That's your camera on off switch. And as you can see, you've got to be careful holding it when you do that because it's going to come out and push your hand away. Yeah, that's your mode dial. That is your flash gun, obviously, and the switch for it is there. Push. Up. Down again. You'll notice it's high up. But if even with that on, at 24mm, anything close, you'll get a shadow cast by this part. So remember that. Just take it off if it's important to you. <laughs> and then... Built in here on the front, you've got two stereo microphones, okay? Be careful you don't cover them with your fingers, and obviously they've got to be pretty limited on any digital camera. They can't be brilliant, and that is not the ideal place to have any stereo microphones. But it's a good system on this camera. It's probably one of the better ones out of all the cameras I've got or had. There's your hot shoe and you push a button down on there to get to it. Okay, be careful you don't lose it. I don't know how much it will cost but I'll bet it won't be tempting. <laughs> right, I say that you know about the flash open lever. Yeah, you've got a diopter adjuster. If you can see it in there. Let me just put a light on. On there. Just below the flat. The flash one's there and the diopter one's halfway down there. And you can set your uh, plus and minus up on your diopter through the EVF, through the electronic viewfinder. Then you've got uh, the LV, bit, LV button, <laughs> which is there. And that means live view. That and that. So that you can see any time if you want to set it that way. When you put your eye over that, that goes out. So I usually leave that on my camera folded that way. So I can still use the touch pads on the viewfinder there. You've got a headphone socket. Which is there, the top one there. They've got funny little covers on them, but they don't feel fragile. 
and that's for your headphones in there you've got the HDMI and you've also got the um, mini USB on here you've got the neutral density filters it's auto 164th, 116, one quarter and off. And it's very, very effective in still and in video. Quite critical for getting depth of field control in video. Then you've got the FN1 button, which controls the zoom slowly. FN2 button, which controls the zoom slowly, so you can have out and in. And then you've got FN3 button, which you could anything you want you please yourself battery goes in there doesn't interfere with being on the tripod brilliant and the HD card goes in there and as you can see I use a 128 U3 code 10 or class 10 or whatever you want to call it and it shows you on there how to put the card in with that cut to that side there. That's you. I'd like to say that's it, but it isn't. <laughs> right. These tips are basically for newbies, not for you who are well experienced. This camera, if you're going to hold it in your hand and not tripod it all the time, hold it there. You've got the control for the zoom. And the focus there if you want to use it but hold it there and the reason for that is that lens will come out to that length whatever happens when you start it and no matter how much you zoom it in or out that lens will stay like that but when you switch it off if you're holding it there I'm going to hold it with this hand but if you're holding it there it would have your hands off <laughs> oh dear Anyway, hold it like that, elbows in at your side, either looking at the LVF, the live viewfinder, or the EVF, electronic, electronic viewfinder, and legs apart. You become the tripod. Not at my age you don't, but when you're younger you do. <laughs> and also I have a setting in the camera and it detects when you go from vertical horizontal and then when you play it back it comes in the viewfinder just the same way so it doesn't always work when the camera is held vertically and tilted significantly up or down the detection function may not work you still get what you took on here but it may not be might be you've got to turn it around physically now using the viewfinder there's your diopter in there. I find the easiest way is lens cap on, switch on, look in the EVF and dial this in. All I'm looking at is pixels and that's all I need to see. If you're doing it with a live subject, it's hit and miss. But just work, your EV, work that out through your EVF just looking at the pixels much easier so when you switch on if you look at the screen I'll just take these off for now the caps off there you can see the screen down there and it even has the amount of zoom on it which you can see it says I'm at 24 mil it can go up to nearly 2000 but uh, that's for you to find out I've explained it in another video and I'll probably go into detail in another one in the future but that's what you see is in there. When you go put your eye over the viewfinder, watch the bottom screen. And rightly so. Why do you need it in the bottom screen if you're looking at it in the EVF? But this way, as soon as you've looked at it, you can do that. Now you've got a full movement on this. So you can have it like that if you want. Or any angle you want for selfies and things like that or up the way and down the way and <laughs> I'm just thankful it works <laughs> I'm just going to switch off again
but that's how the LVF works and at least you know and it, it's all, it can all be switched up and set up in the camera and the menu system it, it's up to you how you do it but to set the eye sensor sensitivity and the automatic switching you need to go to the into the menu there and it says menu set in the middle of that big dial there and then when you go to menu set I could show you I suppose couldn't I menu set you want to go <laughs> to that C with a spanner okay and then you go to what's called eye sensor now you've several ways of doing that you can go this way I use this and you're looking for there it is eye sensor AF is on that's that there okay as easy as that you got loads of things you can do on the menus but just if you get the handbook you can do them all it's just the case of taking your time going through them on accepted I use that arrow to get out but you can use that one there poof gone and then switch you off and there you go and that's how easy it is to set that LVF now zoom ring that's that big boy there if you look at it that way it's wide and telly but to be honest if you're looking at it on the screen you can tell which way it's going <laughs> and then you can use these buttons on the side here FN1 and FN2 for fast and slow zooms Let's see if I can show you would be good Now what's that on now? 24. So let's see. See how slow it's going? It won't be in focus. Don't expect it to be because I've not got the focus going. But it's now up at 111, 20, 30, 40, 50. And then if you go to the FN2, there it goes nice and slow. Slower than you could do it by hand. It's a beautiful, beautiful effect. Or you can simply use the thing on the front there, <laughs> that lever. But it's that is much faster than you would might want it to be. Zooming in and out, look, well, far too fast. Unless you're in a hurry. At my age, I'm never in a hurry. <laughs> All right, the shutter button itself. If you press it halfway, it's to focus. Or you can have it aperture value, shutter speed, or focus indication. Set it up in the menu. The aperture value and shutter speed are always displayed. It will flash in red if the correct exposure isn't set, except when the flash is on. If you put the flash on, you get no warnings. It assumes you know what you're doing. <laughs> Once the subject's in focus, the focus indication is displayed. When subject's not in, in focus, the indication flashes. You've got the, I've showed you the focus range, how it expands and goes back and forward. Right, see if we can get this, the mold dial. I'm going to show you what the mode dial does. IA is intelligent auto mode. When you go into it, you also get the choice of IA plus, which is intelligent auto mode plus. <laughs> P is program, program AE mode. A is aperture priority AE mode. S is shutter priority, AE mode. M is manual exposure mode, all down to you. The M with the cine camera on it is creative video mode, which means you can make a load of settings in it if you're not working in manual. I work in manual, I don't use these ND filters. I have a big ND filter variable that fits on the front with its own rubber hood and I dial in the amount of neutral density I want 
to control the light, the darkness, the speed, the depth of field, the aperture. It took me 50 years to learn how to do that, so I'm not even going to explain it. <laughs> but I'm happy with it, and it works perfectly. Not on the little camera there that I'm recording with. That's a Sony 20G. They're, I just use them because they're brilliant little cine cameras. Cine. Oh, I'm dating myself. The brilliant little video cameras for doing these sort of things. And that's it on that. And then you go from there to custom. That's the custom mode where you get to set anything you want up and then save it. So you've always got a set in there. And then you've got the panoramic shot. That's that. 360 degrees or that. That way the images are so huge make sure you've got a good computer <laughs> i mean you're talking 50 to 60 gigabyte <laughs> for a whole scene and then you're going to make it small and little to put it on youtube or to put it on facebook <laughs> so don't bother shooting it in high definition or 4k because by the time those companies have finished messing it up nobody will ever know it was really 4k <laughs> You can protect it now on YouTube, but it's a, it's a lot of fiddling. And then you go from here to the scene mode. Now, I call that the arty mode. Yeah, because you can set up a load of different scenes and make it do anything you want. But you can do all of that in post-production. If you do any post-production, Photoshop, I use Corel. I use Corel Paint Shop Pro and I use uh, Video Studio. Uh, that's what I'm comfortable with. But I've got a friend in Scotland that loves Photoshop and doesn't mind paying hundreds of pounds <laughs> to do it with. <laughs> and he's Scottish as well. <laughs> and then you go to that setting, the paint brush and the easel. Yeah, now I call this, in a posh accent, the arty farty setting. I don't use it, I don't want to use it, I don't need it, I don't know why it's there, and yet you may love it. There's no... <laughs> There is no set standards or rules in photography. The only rule is, does it suit you? Do you like it? Then do it. That's it. As long as you're not harming anybody else. So we'll call it a break at that stage. And I'll see you later. Cheerio just now.